Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so today is the uh, let's talk, talk sorry, <laughs> let's talk Toth, uh, 23rd of September 2021, and uh, we're here to cover a few topics in the agenda. I added a couple, feel free to add more, but as the current ones are my own, I will start. The first one is that there, there is this request to uh, create a cluster on AWS for uh, to have to move top production services there, uh, given that the current problem is with the uh, small cluster. Um, there was a recent discussion on on chat as well about this of other teams that are also looking to move their production to AWS, but on a different approach. So I wanted to basically ask uh, what what are the plans, let's say. what. Mm. So the issue here is, the, the not the issue, I mean, the issue that is referenced here is uh, the plan is to deploy it using Operate First and all that it implies with open procedures and documentation. The alternative is to use, uh, well, the typical, let's say, a typical AWS deployment approach. And one of the options is Rosa, Red Hat OpenShift on AWS. But that's not, I guess, operate first friendly. So what do you guys think? I think so too, right? How sharp the approaches have ACM deploy a cluster on Amazon, right? Yes. So they have access to it. So they will deploy. They will, uh, yeah, just pick up the machines from it, ACM and ACM will deploy. Mm -hmm. And if 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 we're doing Rosa, it's more like uh, we order an OpenShift cluster on the Amazon web user interface, and later on we would have to integrate it into Operate First somehow. I think that that's a use case for Operate First, where the customer is bringing his own cluster, but it feels like it's easier to have ACM deploy all that stuff. I haven't used Rosa, but I believe you cannot. Uh, it's a managed offering, so you you don't really manage the cluster, and therefore I don't think you can can mm. hand it over to another. It's mm. it's it's fully managed by jointly by uh, Amazon and AWS, uh, and Red Hat. Sorry. I'm I'm happy with whatever. Um, uh, with whatever uh, operate first is giving us. If it's ACM, that's good for me. I just want something that's up and running. Bless her. So what do we what do we do with the other team that the packet team I think was suggesting to join ah, efforts? Uh, right. That's a uh, sales opportunity for Marcel. So he gonna head out to um, Thomas Tomacek because for me as an, as an AI COE member, it feels like, yeah, exactly the thing that we want to see. Other Red Hat teams joining the Operate First effort and running their production level community focused services on Operate First. Um, if they're going to use resources like compute and VMs and network, blah, 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 from Amazon or not, that's a different story. Uh, if they're going to pay for that, different story. But from, from a strategical office of the CTO slash AICUE point of view, the packet service or the packet team that is running this service should use Operate first. So, uh, let, let's see what Marcel uh, can do with these guys. I think for us, it is a good hint. Um, Frido, I think you met Thomas somewhere, somehow. Um, it is a good hint uh, that we see uh, with regards to transparency, that we see that other teams want to do the same as we. 
and push them to open shift, uh, operate first. So please include also Eliška Slovodova, who is a uh, engineer manager. Yeah. And Tomasz Tomaszek. Uh, and uh, Irka was part of the discussion as well. Yeah. And I think uh, Tomasz and Marcel did something for last DEF Conf or so. Um, anyway, um, Marcel and um, that Walter, they, they are most often in close contact, so they have regular meetings. Seth Walter, I think, is the manager of 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 Thomas Tomacek. Because Steph is heading the same direction. If it's a service we're going to provide to the community, the service operations itself must be completely open, which is essentially operate first. Um, so back to the previous point, I saw Harsha, you had a question here to this comment about actually a co question in the issue about naming the cluster. Naming yeah, is hard, so. They are discussing what name it should be. Uh, I think they uh, prefer lot of the rings uh, names which they are being used in the previous cluster they spawn up on AWS so I can I, I I still can wait in right it's not it's not finished that discussion isn't it yeah I I, I said we need some time it's like they are discussing and they're gonna put so I said let let us give, give us some time we'll discuss it and let you know okay. so if any of us wants different names are you are you uh, you like Lord of the Rings themed things, Hasha? Uh, not not uh, specifically. I would not have preferred it. I would have preferred some more easier ones, uh, just because it will show up in the routes. Even though we don't share the routes, but it will yeah. show up in the routes which we are using. And um, uh, Frido, what is that name of that trans festival in Poland? I think we, we shared that once on uh, YouTube. Can you remember what I'm talking about? What do you mean? Uh, I think there's like like a techno or trance or something like that uh, festival in Poland somewhere. It's like in the summer. I don't know, Tomorrowland. I don't know. No, that's, that's, that's in that's Poland. Okay. But that's also a good thing. I, I don't look it up. Anyway, I, I gonna wave in. Is it on which issue? 996? Uh, 936. 396, sorry, 396, yeah. And the, the link to the direct comment is here in the meeting minutes. And uh, whatever you name, uh, they will prefer that. Uh, there is a separate thread going on in the chat in Slack as well, which okay. you also link to Christoph. And I think whatever you, like we will decide, they will just go with that name. Okay, then uh, people, please decide. <laughs> Do you want to create a poll for that? No. <laughs> we uh, my, no. my only comment would be, this has been waiting for weeks now. <laughs> and maybe let's not, I mean, let's not delay too much with the naming discussion. I know naming is hard, but I would put a deadline of today maybe is it too harsh or the deadline for them was 10 minutes so i stopped them uh, um, okay uh, <laughs> here's a oh, well then let's continue after the meeting then or and but not much more okay Good. thanks cool anything else about the aws cluster so just to recap, uh, there's that uh, sync with uh, package team, right? Uh, Marcel will, will handle it. That's my understanding, yes. And maybe as a further step, it would be great. At, you know, but that's a bit out of, 
well, a lot out of scope here, but it would be great if Rosa as a service one day kind of adopts to this operate first principles of openness, but I don't think it's like, but not short term, definitely, right? This would be great. Okay. Is it, um, um, Pep, did you say Rosa is operated by Red Hatters or by, by uh, Amazons? It's a joint effort. I don't, I'm not sure exactly the details, but there, it's definitely an AWS service. So when you go to AWS, it's there in the menu. Therefore, there, the AWS does have, uh, you know, is the point of contact. So any support request, but there is a, a Red Hat team behind the operations as well, an SRA team. But it is uh, different from OpenShift Dedicated, right? It is, yes. It, it is. So OpenShift Dedicated is fully up. So it's Red Hat operating it, but yes. Rosa is an AWS service. But it, it also has like it has a CLI, a specific CLI for for it, and which has been developed as far as I know by Red Hat. And yeah. yeah. So obviously we will not open source AWS operations yet, but <laughs> the the Red Hat part maybe. Anyway, but that's not taught. So let's go back to talk taught. And the next topic is diagrams. Well, I suggested. Yeah, there was those. There were a few discussions and works on uh, around diagrams. And as a newcomer to the project, I I think it's. I, I think they are great. So there's a request to update them and expand them. And I just want to mention that I created this issue where with the goals, but feel free to comment or, or suggest ideas. If you guys think it's not needed, it's also good to know, but I see. Francesco already pointed to those which I have missed. Thank you. But one that we saw, the general architecture is quite dense and maybe probably a bit out of date. Um, yes. Uh, sorry, this one is out of date, like uh, some of the components that are present uh, no longer live. Uh, if uh, you want to dive into architecture, I think we have a HTML document. Uh, I will share it with you. Also, feel free to add it to the issue. And uh, that's uh, authentically generated document, and that should be uh, up to date, like the architecture on the Station Ninja documentation. Should state all the all the documents. If that's not true, uh, please uh, open an issue or directly fix it. And the diagram that was created that looks really good to support this architecture text. Yeah, it's this one, right? Yes. Some this of the components a... were missing. Uh, so I don't know if we want to create an extended diagram to this, uh, because if I understood correctly, Francesco, uh, this describes external trigger. Uh, and in that case, some of the components are not there. Yes, uh, there is another version, uh, more updated, in, that mm -hmm. they put in the chat. But uh, yes, the idea was, this is more for, because uh, Hima asked me how Kebeshet works. So we sat there and we started to describe what we need uh, for the metrics. Not uh, like all the components we have, but only the one that we actually have, because all, all of these are metrics. And as the goal is to have, uh, let's say, a nice dashboard for Kebeshet to be like uh, well defined with everything separated in operational content, uh, everything that uh, um, he must started to describe in that document. We started from the schema. I know it's uh, um, too much, maybe, but uh, yes, we can separate them in internal, external. But uh, that is not 
the goal is not to have uh, the thought architecture in that diagram. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to metrics as discussed, uh, it might be a good idea to have sequence diagrams, like, you know, like sequence diagrams specific for uh, graph refresh, for example, that is triggering the, the, the workflow. So in that case, it could be more clear uh, what metrics can be exposed. Yes. Mm, yeah, that might be might be a very good idea to have a sequence diagram for as as the base for metrics um, because uh, actually we could have like a horizontal line for every metrics uh, that we want to have and we can clearly describe what what it says right um, I don't know uh, it it would uh, nicely show. Like when these five steps are done, we can exactly make this statement. All the things have been worked on, or the, we are missing five uh, things, or we, we are missing 100 packages or something like that. That might be good. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking while talking, so sorry about that. Yes, I mean, we can definitely do sequence diagrams just to show the work, the flows, how it up, what happens when there is a package release, what happens when there is a, I don't know, CV update, and all the triggers that comes. Those are great, really great, uh, but they are very detailed. My, my suggestion would be to have, uh, to start from a high level and, and dive deeper, those sequence diagrams also could be kind of a even deeper, let's say, than this this one, which is very detailed. But like as a, an entry point I, to the project, uh, the architecture diagram. Why do I have so many copies of it? Anyway, this one um, is quite overwhelming. I would say it is interesting to to dive or the equivalent, which is, so this one is very nice, but it's also quite overwhelming a bit. And, and I would also say um, there are other integration points. So this is just from, from the point of view of metrics, but there is there are the pipelines, which are not strictly taught, I guess, but uh, I think it would be interesting to have a diagram also explaining those relationships. And so the suggestion would be to have like a top level diagram and then where, you know, where Todd is even just a box, <laughs> you know, that simple uh, and, and pipelines are another box and, and then one per box, let's say, and, and mm -hmm. keep Diving. Maybe we can take the uh, topic of um, build pipelines, Kabyshet maintaining a repository, and we provide the predictive stack container images to Open Data Hub. Maybe we can take this context and do the same exercise as uh, Hema now did. Um, have a sequence diagram of what happens if a package update comes in. Kebeshet is doing something. We're going to see that pull request. We're going to merge that pull request. We're going to rebuild all that stuff. How long does if if we are thinking about metrics, how long does it take to build all that uh, these container images and deliver them to Quay? Then we're going to GitOps update the image stream object somewhere in Open Data Hub to make it visible in Jupyter Spawner, and then. I think the cycle ends. So if we take these uh, three components, like uh, Kebeshet doing updates to a predictive stack repository and the AI CECI build pipelines delivering these images, if we focus on metrics again, just as HEMA did, and if we use the sequence diagram as a tool, Maybe that would go. What would be a good um, addition? I think for the for the CI pipelines, Harshad and Pep, you have created some diagram, right? Yes. Um, 
Yes, and I have it open in another window. Oh. So besides sequence diagrams, it might be good to have uh, these architecture diagrams specific for some aspects of, of the system. So for example, ingesting new uh, packages and which components are involved and how do they uh, work together. That's uh, basically what Pep described, like have a high level overview of thought that where it would be really like a black box. And then if you zoom in, uh, you can zoom into data aggregation when it comes to uh, package releases. Another can be zooming in uh, container image analysis. Another can be uh, SLO reports. And stuff it, is, like it is something like a context diagram, right? So, so context is um, a package update. So which components are involved in package update? How do they interact? Um, if we talk about, um, uh, I don't know, context um, advice generation, there might be a few components which are the same, but there might be additional components, right? So that you have basically for, for every context or for every use case we think about a diagram. Is that, is that what you're saying? Because yes. zooming sounds like we can drill in and we see millions of lines, which is uh, not always helpful, uh, I guess. And to avoid seeing a lot of lines, it can be a specific scenario, like uh, starting from a new package release, and the end goal would be uh, data are present in the database, which components are uh, along the way. Then another uh, diagram would say we have a package in, in the database that was uh, newly released. And then, uh, for example, advice, how that works. So uh, they can be like semantically uh, grouped and also have uh, sequences uh, when it comes to uh, semantics. Um, that sounds great, but then I see this list of <laughs> uh, diagrams to build kind of exploding, potentially, maybe. Um, which is fine, but maybe, I don't know, how do you want to refine this or organize it? I'm, does it sound okay to start, you know, from the high level overview and then so top down or bottom up? I think top down can help us keep what, the context. So beside Kevishet, what is the um, if we are talking about metrics? Uh, beside Kevishet, what is the most interesting um, topic? Uh, CV updates, package updates. Like package releases, package update, uh, graph refresh. So, Francesco, do device. we have some kind of service level objective for um, something like uh, Upstream has created a new release of package ABZ, and then how long does it take to have Kevish had that pull request opened? Something like that. Because that what would involve package update job, I guess. It would involve generating new pull requests for all the repositories we maintain. That might be an interesting uh, cycle. Or we're going to go back to the uh, uh, Kebishet AI, CUE, CI, and predictive stacks. How long does it take to? Uh, integrate an upstream release into a predictive stack. Let's let's use that one. Okay, we can start with that one. Yeah, that way we can show. Okay, it takes thirty-five seconds to create a new predictive. Well, it will not be seconds actually. It will more be like minutes or hours. Um, it takes. For us, it takes five hours to create a new release of a predictive stack 
for example, the uh, predictive stack for uh, computer vision to, to update that predictive stack with an upstream release that is a transitive dependency of that stack or uh, yeah, a dependency of that stack. Does that make sense? Yes. That sounds good. Yeah. Well, we will consider the average of the time of solvers. We don't, we don't know each package, how much time does it take? Uh, yeah, well. Um, we, we could, but yes. we don't have that. Well, it's uh, manifold, right? I, uh, I ask you to create that service level objective. That's so all. we're going to have, <laughs> yeah, that's all. <laughs> We're going to use that as an example to create, to prioritize the next uh, context diagram for us. So it involves uh, updating predictive stacks, which involves a little bit of Gavishet, a little bit of uh, package release job, a little bit of um, Tamos advice and stuff like that. And then let's see if we can use these context diagrams and sequence diagrams to put in some new or existing metrics into a dashboard. So that SLO will, SLO will be a metric that will be supported by multiple context diagrams that yes. are involved in, in that SLO. I think so, yes. Yeah. That Actually, that SLO is just to set the priorities for which context diagrams we're going to do first. Um, I was pretty sure there were issues open about this. I, I saw it this morning uh, before, but I cannot find them. <laughs> the, the, the ones we were talking about right now, Francesco, I, I th there is an issue, right? There was one for provenance checker, I think. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll find the links. Do we want to keep provenance checker long term? Say so again, well, we, if we want to keep provenance checker in general? Mm -hmm. uh, as implemented now, because as we integrate with six door, uh, the flow will look differently. Um, I'm, I'm unsure about that. Um, I'm sure. Good point. So it might be good to postpone that one until we're really seeing uh, how the provenance check will look like with six star. Exactly. Yeah, but I was talking about. Um, the previous discussion about um, SLOs and, you know, th there was one about a web page, like a dashboard for Kevin uh, Yes. How do you pronounce Kevin Chet? Kevin Chet or Kevin Chet or? We are, we're not that picky about pronunciation at all. Okay. Um. Okay. Took longer and a span much wider than I thought, which is good. <laughs> but oh, thank you. Yes, yeah, so just to see if I understood correctly, the idea here or the suggestion is that this type of overview would be related to the diagrams, would be, you know, I'm not sure if there is an acceptance criteria here that includes. 
a workflow diagram if you want for for this but the, the suggestion would be to have one included right like visualize this as well with a companion diagram right yes we basically created this issue first but now we are doing the opposite with the HEMA using this example as Kebeshet is the first example we use for the monitoring project. And we're going to describe how you do like the diagrams. Then we go into the flows and then we define the metrics, who the metrics target. And then the result will be, of course, the dashboard divided in, in the way that we want to divide at the end. This okay. comes from all the process. Yes, so the the issue um, is still valid. It's, it's what we're aiming for, right? Yes. Yes. Yes, I mean, there are still technical things that needs to be implemented here. So from with the EMA, we are going through the theoretical things and the metrics that are going to be created. Mm. And then here, there should be metrics that still needs to be created. OK, cool. Yeah, and I wasn't finding this issue because I was searching for it in the Kebacher repo and not core. So anyway. Oh, there is a meeting starting. Sorry. Bye, Kevin. And I don't know if someone else needs to drop. Um, actually, we don't have more topics for today, but is there any other topic that Anyone else wants to discuss? If there is no topic, let's uh, clear out the name for that cluster because sure. as soon as we get that, they will create it for us. Cool. Before we move there, can I ask? Uh, so from the second topic, do we create an issue just to know a reference of that first diagram we want? You mean the diagrams? OK, uh, so there is this generic issue. I feel yes. that it's maybe too wide or too big. So yes, let's create issues, specific issues for each diagram, maybe, or maybe, and link them yes. here. How do you handle epics? Like, is, is there a, I, I don't know if there is like a, I mean, this is not a whole project, I would say. So it's, it's something in between, not a simple issue, not a whole project. But yeah, just so linking here, OK. Yeah, create more issues and link them here. Um, I think, uh, Francesco, the other ticket, uh, the other issue that you showed is using that extensively, right? Like uh, checkbox lists with links to other issues. Uh, that feels good to me. Whatever works, actually. Yeah, you. Um, I mean, we have the tracker yeah. that we put in the issue to say that this is a tracker and there are more issues to be done to complete. A label, and, you mean? Oh, yeah, labels. You have labels, you need labels, correct. Yes, um, we put it in the title, basically, in square parentheses. Okay. I'm going to take the name stuff off the recording. So any any other thoughts to these uh, two topics? Sounds good. Thanks, everybody. Going to stop the recording.